Hey everybody, at the movies with film, down here in the vault at KTS, really enjoy bringing some good quality films for you. Tonight is no exception. We got one of those creepy films, films full of fog, films full of uh, mist, films full of uh, crepuscular scenes of darkness and twilight, films where the sun never seems to, well, be about. It's always dark, and it's very misty. Well, the title of this film, film fits it really well. Fog Island, 1945. This is a very uh, uh, atmospheric film, if you haven't gotten the, uh, the point already, uh, directed by Terry Morse. Terry Morse, you might know him, uh, Unknown World, he directed that. He also directed the American scenes uh, in uh, King Kong, uh, in uh, Godzilla, the original uh, Godzilla. Now, this film is one of those PRC films coming out of that very small Poverty Row Studios. It's written by a guy named Pierre Guedron, who also worked pretty much in that studio and uh, wrote the screenplay for one of the great Edgar Ulmer films that we've shown, shown on this show, uh, Bluebeard. Now, the cast of this, made up of some lesser knowns, but two of the top folks in here that you'll want to watch, George Zuko. George Zuko plays uh, a man who was, well, framed and spent some time in jail and uh, has vengeance on his mind. And he invites to his island in this sort of large mansion with lots of secret passages and strange uh, chambers that flood and things like that. Uh, he invites all of these folks to come out and be with him, people who had wronged him in the past. And each of them are given clues that supposedly go to some kind of treasure, some kind of money that's hidden in the house. And they all start looking around, start knocking each other off, trying to perhaps get to this uh, mysterious treasure out there. Another great guy in here, Lionel Atwill, you know him, sort of a perennial uh, sort of character player in a lot of horror films. He uh, also was in this. He's one of the men who was invited out to the island. The thing I really liked about this film was that the, the strange, odd sort of timelessness and the timeless quality of what's going on out there. They're cut off from the mainland, they're cut off from the world, they're out there on Fog Island, and they're all on their own devices. Who do you trust? Do you trust the young female heroine and her sort of uh, er, uh, hapless boyfriend type of guy? Or do you trust uh, uh, anybody, the, uh, the phony psychic? Do you trust, well, the person that's sitting next to you? And uh, sort of like that. And then there were none type of stories, wondering who's going to do what. This story deals with it well. And I think that George Zuko does a remarkable job in this film, sort of uh, uh, being sinister in a quiet way. Both he and Lionel Atwill had sort of a screen presence uh, that just sort of, when they came on, they just kind of took over. They didn't have to do much. They could just stand there. For instance, George Zuko walking up to the top of that grand staircase and looking down on top of the rest of the characters, talking down to them. Great way to, sh to kind of use that uh, Zuko presence and that power that he has other folks over other folks. Terry Morse, not that great of a director. Uh, the, I think the screenplay carries this pretty much. It's based on a play by a, a woman by the name of uh, uh, Bernadine Agnes. And uh, it does still have some of that creakiness of a play. But in some ways, that creakiness of a play uh, is sort of an aesthetic to enjoy. Some people say, well, open it up, make it more cinematic. But at the same time, there's another impulse to sort of maintain the staginess. There's a quality to that form of uh, it's a play on screen. And it has that creakiness of entrances and exits that you find theatrical and that kind of acting that sort of is to you from the theater. And seeing it on the screen, it takes on a different feel. It takes on sort of a rarefied feel. That's why I like the Bat Whispers, for instance, a show that we have seen earlier on here. I, li I like that it kept to the stage feel. Putting it on film makes it different. It's still a film, and it's also got that theatrical element. Fuse the two together, and you've got some very interesting feels good case in point. Many people argue that in Dracula, 
the early parts, which are very good, of Todd Browning, uh, the whole part where uh, Renfield goes to Castle Dracula and has his experience there. But then when we come back to London, it becomes very stagey. Some people say that's the bad part of the film. It's another part of the film that I find to be interesting in the decisions that were made there. In trying to say there is a presence of a stage play that pre-exists this, do I maintain it? Do I open it up? Or what kind of negotiations and compromise do I have to make as a director to let this be on the screen? I think Todd Browning made some good decisions. Not all of them were good. I think that Terry Morse, in some ways, let his material guide him. Well, let's have a little bit of fun with this. Shoot me an email if you have a mind to. Fog Island, one of those great PRC type of films. Let's roll them, Smokey. <laughs>